This video is sponsored by Factor. Factor makes it super simple to achieve your nutrition goals with their fresh, never frozen meals delivered straight to your doorstep. Their gourmet chefs whip up each meal with top notch ingredients chosen to get you feeling amazing all day long. I notice such a positive difference in my mood and energy levels when I eat well rounded meals with plenty of protein and fiber. But a lot of the time I feel too tired or busy to cook those kinds of things myself. So instead I turn to takeout, which is expensive, or eat something at home that's usually not so nutritious. But Factor lets me have the best of both worlds. I get to feel my best with healthy meals while also enjoying the convenience of just grabbing something easy since the meals are ready to eat with just two minutes in the microwave. Factor's food also tastes really, really good. I've raved to my friends and families about how delicious the meals are. I've been really impressed with how flavorful and well-cooked everything has been. They even managed to make all the vegetables really addictive somehow. They've got over 35 different options to choose from each week, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, and more. So you'll never run out of tasty choices. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code GOODNIGHTMOON50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life. Two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you are an active subscriber. Hello, I hope that you are doing very, very, very Tonight, we are going to be doing a show and tell. I spent this past weekend in LA. I did a couple of really fun things that I have some souvenirs from to share with you. Uh, the first is going to be from the Stardew Valley Festival of the Seasons Orchestra event. I went to a showing in Los Angeles. It was so magical. I haven't ever been to an like orchestral performance before and it was really really enjoyable to get to watch the musicians playing live and I uh, especially liked watching the conductor. I think my eyes were just on the conductor for a good amount of the time because it was so mesmerizing. The visual of his hands combined with the music, you know, like following his movements. I'm so curious about what goes into the process of learning how to be a conductor because, yeah, I don't know. I was, I was trying to figure it out by watching him, like which movements mean what exactly, and it was, yeah, pretty inscrutable to me, but still uh, very enjoyable to watch. So this is the sheet music. he said there was a surprise guest. I was so tickled by the gasp that befell the audience. It was such a like, <gasps> sort of, oh, oh my gosh, it sounded like a sound effect, you know, like on a royalty-free sound effect library. If you were to look up like a crowd gasp, that's what it would sound like. Because everyone immediately knew they were going to bring out Concerned Ape. Yeah, it was super fun. I would love to go to something like that again if you had the opportunity to go to an orchestral performance from any soundtrack, of any soundtrack, what would you want it to be? I think I would love Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing City Folk. 
itself this is a snuffle mat which i don't know how official of a name that is that's just what this product was called online was a carrot snuffle mat and i thought that was so cute because a lot of dogs they like sort of <laughs> like sniffing rummaging around and to call that snuffling feels really accurate so basically here we have snugly tucked into their respective cylinders and it's meant for your pup to snuffle sniffing the interesting smells all around between all throughout and eventually either use their teeth or their paws to scratch and dig and pull at the carrots and you can tuck kibble and treats and stuff into the cylinder as well as into pockets inside of the carrots and there's one two three four five folds of leaves i'm so happy about how much my dog eddie has been enjoying this i bought it hopeful that it would keep him engaged because he really needs some more stimulation he's a very high energy dog and it feels like a lot of times even when i take him for a long walk or he could stay hang out with other dogs, or I play fetch with him, things like that. It still feels like he's he's antsy and he needs something more. And I feel like this has totally helped with that. Because he's a big digger, he likes digging in the yard. So I'll just tuck some treats into these and it occupies him for a while. And he seemed to really enjoy it, so I'm happy to have found something that can help tire him out. So the brand that makes this is called Fossa. F-O-S-S-A. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Also this weekend, I visited the Bob Baker Marionette Theater for their show called Magic Strings. I've heard lots of rave reviews about the Bob Baker Marionette Theater, and I'm really happy to have finally gotten to go. If you're ever in the LA area, I would if you're into this sort of thing, um, you know, puppets, <laughs> theater, there were beautiful puppets. Some of them were even quite old. One of them was called Bull. He's a tap dancing bullfrog who is 70 years old. And I, I think I got some footage of him. I really wish I would have recorded during more of the show, but I was just so hypnotized. Here's a clip I got of Bull performing with a little boy. Let me see. Roddy. Roddy and Bull. And I thought Bull was surprisingly beautiful. I loved how bedazzled and bejeweled his back was with shimmering gems that caught the stage light just right. It says, our frogs look a little different once we hit the 70s and 80s with glittering rhinestones decorating their backs. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that, of the sparkles. So, there's Bull the Bullfrog. The inside of the theater was adorable. It was decorated so cute. And I even loved just people watching at the audience. There was lots of young families there, like very hip, cool, LA looking parents with kids that they had dressed up in cute outfits for the occasion. There was a one-year-old and an eight-year-old who were both there with their families for their birthday. So at the beginning of the show, they got to come up on stage and the birthday dogs came out. And throughout 
the show, um, the adults were all seated in chairs, and then the very front row was just pillows, just cushions outlining the stage that all the kids were seated crisscross applesauce on. And a big part of the show was the puppets being brought up to the kids to like poop them on the nose, pat them on the head, even come sit on their lap. It was really cute. All of the kids thankfully seemed to enjoy it, but some of the puppets were a little creepy to be honest. And I was thinking if this puppet would have come, if some of these puppets would have come and sat on my lap when I was five, I would have burst into tears. And I was curious about how often maybe that's happened at this theater. I'm I'm so glad that they do that because most kids just absolutely eat it up and seem to really um, be enthralled and feeling like these puppets really are real and interacting with them. And something that I liked was that, you know, the curtains behind the stage are all those classic bright red curtains and then all of the puppeteers were dressed in that exact same shade of red head to toe so it had sort of like a green screen effect of making them fade into the background and make you just focus on the little critter dancing in front of you the dog the seal the squirrel frog and skunk such a good time, I really wanted to commemorate the experience. So, I purchased a t-shirt in the gift shop. Isn't it cute? It's a big, big pajama shirt. A nice cream color. And it's got a line of sheet music. so much that I I signed up for their email list and I'm really want to every single time they start performing a new show I want to come see it theater was in a very cute hip area with lots of fun restaurants and shopping and stuff and there was this one shop called Daughter spelled D O T D E R that I was just in love with so many things in there. I picked out two. So these are both handmade by an artist called Fairy Shadow. And the first is this necklace, the green strand, and this leaf-shaped pocket with a, it says chocolate mouse inside. So there's the chocolate mouse. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There's the chocolate mouse with his little ears, nose, eyes, tummy, and thin, thin, delicate little tail. Look at that tail. It's barely just a thread, just a thread of a tail. And this chocolate mouse ducks so perfectly into his snug, leafy little home. I don't know if this can fit around my head. Oh, it can. Nice. And he can just go everywhere with me, just like that. <laughs> See if I can get this tag off. Let me know what you think he should be named. What do you think? What name do you think would suit him? I think maybe something starting with a J, like Jerome or Jack. I'm flexible though, let me know what you think. The 
next one is this puppet that's made of a soft brown velvet with a carefully stitched floral ribbon. I think this ribbon is so pretty. I love this type of design with the embroidered flowers and leaves. Delicate stitching. So, if you seem friendly and if he likes your vibe, he just might such a hit with a baby to play peekaboo with. Like, oh, where did he go? There he is. Do, 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 do. I like his hat. This one I was thinking could be named Basil. I don't know, some sort of leafy green nature name would suit him quite well, I think. I love that his mouth is just that This albacore tuna is hook and line caught by small boat fisher folk in the North Pacific. It's smoked over natural wood and hand packed by a First Nations owned cannery in North America. Wow, I've got to show you the art on all the sides of this box. It's so cute. That's just the nutrition facts. But that side is cute. And that side is cute. And that side, I dare say, is cutest of all. Besides the cover, of course. I think the cover wins quite clearly. And then I also picked up the fishwife smoked with Sichuan salmon chili crisp. Raised in Norway. What is fishwife? A brushed, foul-mouthed woman who smells fish. Who sells fish? I screwed that up a lot. A brash, foul mouthed woman who sells fish. How to eat over a steaming veggie rice bowl, mixed into freshly packed onigiri, sandwiched in a spicy tuna melt, or naked straight out of the can. So there's what this one looks like. I am excited to try each of these on some. And then I also picked up this Marmalade Grove Pixie Tangerine Marmalade. Delight in our sweet and tangy marmalade, exclusively handmade with fresh ochai pixie tangerines from Marmalade Grove. Grown under the golden California sun, 
these thousand little suns taste bright with every bite. So, thousand little suns. Thousand little suns. I love to think of fruit as thousands of little suns. That's so cute. They soak up so much sunlight that they become thousands of little suns themselves. This Christmas ornament that arrived in the post, unfortunately, too late for Christmas time. But I still love him. I've had him hanging in the kitchen, and I think he'll just be a year-round fixture. Not Christmas-specific, just new addition to my home. This reminds me of Paddington. I love his ruffled red collar, and his perfectly pointed his name be? Like Gus, something like that. Let's see if I can make him twirl. I don't know if I'd be any good at being a puppeteer. I think that it would be such a fun job, but I don't know if I have the multitasking type of mind for it. Watching them puppeteer, it was so much of like instrument playing sort of movements or like pat your head, rub your belly kind of things where you're following a certain rhythm with one hand and a completely different rhythm with the other hand. I don't really know if I'm built for that. <laughs>
readers of all ages 40 years ago. Since then, the mice have been published all over the world, appearing on a wide range of merchandise and in their own animated television series. The self-sufficient community, living in perfect harmony with their surroundings, 
make the most of what every season has to offer. This exquisite treasury celebrates the enduring popularity of Brambley Hedge by bringing together all the much-loved classic stories. We are looking forward to spring. I would love to read you the spring story. So first we have this illustration. He and she are having a little chat through the window in the tree. Blossoming yellow flowers. I think I'm going to tilt your gaze downwards so that you can have a better view of the illustrations while I'm reading this story. It was the most beautiful morning. The spring sunshine crept into every cottage along Brambley Hedge the little windows in the trees were opened wide. All the mice were up early, but earliest of all was Wilfred, who lived with his family in the hornbeam tree. It was Wilfred's birthday. Jumping out of bed, he ran into his parents' room and bounced on their bed till they gave him their presents. Happy birthday, Wilfred, said Mr. and Mrs. Toad Flax sleepily. He tore off the pretty wrappings and scattered them all over the floor. His squeaks of excitement woke his brother and sisters. His parents turned over to go to sleep again. Wilfred went and sat on the stairs and blew his new whistle. Mr. and Mrs. Apple lived next door at Crab Apple Cottage. The sound of Wilfred's whistle floated in through their bedroom window. Mrs. Apple got up and stretched. She sniffed the sweet air and went down to the kitchen to make a pot of elderflower tea. She was a very kindly mouse and a wonderful cook. The cottage always smelled of newly made bread, fresh cakes, and blackberry puddings. Breakfast's ready, she called. Mr. Apple got out of bed with a sigh and joined her at the kitchen table. They ate their toast and jam and listened to Wilfred's warbling. I think somebody needs a lesson from the blackbird, said Mr. Apple, brushing the crumbs from his whiskers and putting on his coat. Mr. Apple was a nice old-fashioned sort of mouse. He was warden of the store stump where all the food for Branch Bramley Edge was kept. The store stump was not so far away. As Mr. Apple walked happily through the grass to the big front doors, he felt someone pull his tail. He turned around quickly. It was Wilfred, whistle in hand. It's my birthday! He squeaked. Is it, young mouse? said Mr. Apple. Happy birthday to you. Would you like to come and help me check the stores down? We'll see what we can find. In the middle of the stump was an enormous hall, and leading off from it, many passages and staircases. These led in turn to dozens of storerooms, full of nuts and honey and jams and pickles. Each one had to be inspected. Wilfred's legs felt tired by the time they had finished, and he sat down by the fire in the hall to rest. Mr. Apple lifted down a jar of sugared violets. He made a little cornet from a twist of paper and filled it with sweets. Taking Wilfred by the paw, he led them through the dark corridors and out into the sun. Wilfred went to look for his brother, and Mr. Apple hurried down the hedge to visit his daughter Daisy and her husband, Lord Woodmouse. Lord and Lady Woodmouse lived in the old oak palace in the middle of the hedge. From the outside, the palace looked like an ordinary oak tree, but inside, the trunk was hollowed out to form a beautiful and many-roomed mansion. At its heart was the grand ballroom. Polished doors led to magnificent kitchens, dining rooms, bedrooms, playrooms, spiral 
staircases and secret passages. Old Oak Palace had always been the home of the Woodmouse family. Upstairs, in the best bedroom, Lord and Lady Woodmouse woke to bright sunshine. What a perfect day, sighed Lady Daisy as she nibbled a primrose biscuit. When they heard that Daisy's father had come to call, they were soon up and dressed and running down the winding stairs to greet him. They found him in the kitchen, drinking mint tea with Mrs. Krusty Bread, the palace cook. Daisy gave Mr. Apple a kiss and sat down beside him. Hello, Papa, she said. What brings you here so early? I've just met little Winifred. It's his birthday today. Shall we arrange a surprise picnic for him? What a wonderful idea, said Lord Woodmouse. Daisy nodded. I'll make him a special birthday cake if his mother agrees, said Mrs. Krusty Bread, hurrying off to the pantry to find the ingredients. Everyone was to be invited, of course, so Mr. Apple set off up the hedge towards the woods and Lord Woodmouse went down towards the stream, calling at each house on the way. The first house on Mr. Apple's route was Elderberry Lodge. This fine elder bush was Basil's home. Basil was in charge of the store stump cellars. He was just getting up. A picnic, eh? Splendid. I'll bring up some rose petal wine, he said. Shuffling absentmindedly around the room, looking for his trousers. Basil had long white whiskers and always wore a scarlet waistcoat. He used to keep the other mice amused for hours with his stories. Ah, there you are, you rascals, he exclaimed, discovering his trousers behind the sofa. Next, Mr. Apple came to the hornbeam. Mr. Toadflax was sitting on his front doorstep, eating bread and bramble jelly. We thought it would be nice to have a surprise picnic for your Wilfred, whispered Mr. Apple. We won't tell him what it's for, and we'll all meet at midday by the palace roots. Mr. Toadflax was delighted with the suggestion and went inside to tell his wife. Mr. Apple went on to visit Old Vole, who lived in a tussock of grass in the middle of the field. Lord Woodmouse, meanwhile, was working his way down to the stream. The news had traveled ahead of him, and all along the hedge, excited mice leaned out of their windows to ask when the picnic would take place. I'll see if I can find some preserves, said old Mrs. Eyebright. Shall we bring tablecloths, called the weavers, who lived in the dangly hawthorn trees? Poppy Eyebright from the dairy promised cheeses, and Dusty Dogwood the miller offered a batch of buns. Mice soon began calling at the store stump to collect clover flour and honey, bramble brandy and poppy seeds and all the other good things needed for the picnic. Mrs. Krusty Bread baked a huge hazelnut cake with layers of thick cream, and Wilfred's mother decorated it. Mrs. Apple made some of her special primrose puddings. Wilfred knew that there was to be an outing, and that if he behaved, he would be allowed to go. He did his best, but with a new whistle, a drum, and a pea shooter for his birthday. It was not easy. When the Toad Flax family arrived at the palace, Wilfred was rather disappointed that no one there seemed to know it was his birthday. Indeed, he had rather hoped for a few more presents, but it would have been rude to drop hints, so he hid his feelings as best he could. At a signal, from Lord Woodmouse, they all set off with their baskets, hampers, and wheelbarrows. Every
everyone had something to carry. Wilfred was given an enormous basket, so heavy he could hardly lift it. Mr. Apple lent him a wheelbarrow, and his brothers and sisters helped him to push it. But still, poor Wilfred found it hard to keep up. It was a very long way, heaving and pulling, wheeling and hauling. The mice made their way round the palace, through the cornfield, and up by the stream. Wilfred felt very hot, and he wanted a rest. Here we are, cried Lord Woodmouse at last. The baskets were put down and opened, and nestle-stem cloths spread out on the mossy grass. In no time at all, the food was unpacked. Wilfred was exhausted. He sat on his basket, too tired to open it, his whiskers drooping sadly. Mr. Apple said grace, for this good food from our green fields, may we be very grateful. I think the knives are in your basket, Wilfred, said Mrs. Apple kindly. If you get them out, we can cut the pies. Slowly, Wilfred slipped from his perch and undid the catch. When he lifted the lid, he could hardly believe his eyes. Inside the hamper, packed all around with presents, was an enormous cake. And on top, written in pink icing, was Happy Birthday, Wilfred. Happy Birthday, dear Wilfred. Happy Birthday to you, sang the mice. When Wilfred had opened all his presents, Basil said, Give us a tune. So he bashfully stood up and played Hickory Dickory Dandelion Clock on his new whistle. Mrs. Toadflax nudged him meaningfully when he had finished. Ah, thank you for all my lovely presents, said Wilfred, trying to avoid Mrs. Christie Bread's eye. She had caught him firing acorns through her kitchen window earlier in the day. Now for tea, announced Daisy Woodmouse. The mice sat on the grass, and Wilfred handed round the cake. He was over. The grown-ups snoozed under the blue bells, while the young mice played hide-and-seek in the primrose. At last, the sun began to sink behind the far woods, and a chilly breeze blew over the field. It was time to go home. When the moon came up that night, Brambly Edge was silent and still. Every mouse was fast asleep. I really hope that you enjoyed the spring story from the Brambly Edge. I definitely did. That was such a cozy tale. That's exactly the sort of thing I like to imagine when I'm trying to fall asleep. Thank you so much.